जननी इवं जन्मभूमि पूज्या आदरणीया चवती अस्याश सर्वेशाम देशवसीना यशवती नमस्कार इस दूसरे चरण में आप सभी अतिथिजनों का मैं कुमारी शिवानी गायकवाड़ सादर प्रणाम करती हूँ मैं विनती करती हूँ कि श्री वैभव बड़गी जी वे मान्यवरों को कृपया मंच पे पधारे इस दूसरे सत्र में हमारे साथ श्री प्रकाश बेड़वाड़ी जी और डॉक्टर गुरु प्रकाश पासवान जी प्रमुख वक्ता के रूप में प्राप्त हुए हैं और साथ ही श्री वैभव बड़गी जी मॉडरेटर की भूमिका निभा रहे हैं यह मेरी प्रसन्नता है कि मैं उनको परि, उनका परिचय अपने आपके सामने रखूं बेंगलुरु कर्नाटका से जन्म लिए श्री प्रकाश बेड़वाड़ी जी मैकेनिकल अभियांत्रिकी में शिक्षा प्राप्त करने के बावजूद अपना जीवन रंगभूमि पत्रकारिता और अध्यापक के क्षेत्र में व्यतीत किए हैं वे एक अभिनेता फिल्म निर्देशक अध्यापक और पत्रकार के रूप में परिचित है वे प्रख्यात वक्ता होने के रूप में सिर्फ भारत में नहीं बल्कि एडिनबर्ग बर्मिंगहम गोथेनबर्ग सैन फ्रांसिस्को बोस्टन बर्लिन सियोल और सिडनी में अनेक कार्यक्रम सम्मेलन और टेडेक्स जैसे मंच पे नजर आए हैं प्रकाश जी ने लेखन और निर्देशन की हुई पहली फिल्म स्टम्बल जिसे 2003 में अंग्रेजी भाषा का सर्वश्रेष्ठ फिल्म का राष्ट्रीय पुरस्कार प्राप्त हुआ है 2011 में कर्नाटका नाटका एकेडमी पुरस्कार 2019 में ऑस्ट्रेलिया का हेल्पमैन पुरस्कार और 2021 में कर्नाटका राज्योत्सव पुरस्कार से वे सम्मानित हुए हैं उनका आदर करते हुए हमारे दूसरे वक्ता डॉक्टर गुरु प्रकाश पासवान जी का मैं परिचय करवाती हूँ डॉक्टर गुरु प्रकाश पासवान जी भारतीय जनता पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय प्रवक्ता और पटना विश्वविद्यालय में सहायक प्रोफेसर का काम करते हैं वह 2015 से दलित इंडियन चैम्बर्स ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री के साथ सहायक रहे हैं राष्ट्रीय युवा के वे समन्वयक रहते हुए गुरु प्रकाश जी वर्तमान में एक सलाहकार के रूप में काम कर रहे हैं इंडियन एक्सप्रेस और द प्रिंट सहित अन्य दलित मुद्दों पर उनका लेखन प्रकाशित होता है तथा वे सुदर्शन रामभद्रण के साथ मेकर्स ऑफ मॉडर्न दलित हिस्ट्री नामक पुस्तक का सहलेखन किए हैं यह मेरी अभिलाषा है कि मैं आज यह सूचित करूं कि श्री गुरु प्रकाश पासवान जी को आज के इस शुभ अवसर पर विश्वेश्वरया टेक्नोलॉजिकल यूनिवर्सिटी से डॉक्टरेट पदवी सुपुर्द हुई है प्रबुद्ध भारत की ओर से आपका विशेष अभिनंदन इस चरण के मॉडरेटर श्री वैभव बड़गी जी वे कैली टेक्नोलॉजिकल यूनिवर्सिटी में एक प्राध्यापक के रूप में सेवा करते हैं मैं विनती करती हूं श्री वैभव बड़गी जी कि वे यह सत्र कृपया प्रारंभ करें थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच शिवानी फॉर द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द रिसोर्स पर्सन फॉर द सेशन ऑन द पॉलिटिक्स टू बिगिन विद लेट मी कोट अ वेरी फेमस स्टेटमेंट by franklin roosevelt he says in politics nothing happens by accident it happens if it happens it is well planned and only it is made to look like an accident with this session we start our session for the day in the second part of politics today nationalist ideology continues to shape global politics and yet in 21st century nationalism is faced with its unique set of challenges to further strengthen us may i now request shri prakash balewadi ji to express his thoughts i just want to have my, this time in front of me so that i don't, don't run exceed this okay so so i'll be brief and i'll be quick and i will not um i will not actually follow any script that i have brought here because i think we should leave some space for question answers so i'll try and go through this quickly firstly i see you know the the murti of swami vivekanand there let me tell you a story about swami vivekanand that is relevant to karnataka to bangalore city 
when he was going to the US, eventually to give his parliament, parliament of religions address in, in Chicago, on the ship, for some time, he had the company of Jamshed Sheet Tata. Does anybody know this story? You sh yeah, good. You should Google and find this story, OK? So he had the company of Jamshed Sheet Tata. So they had many things to talk about. And, and eventually, Vivekanand uh, told him, you know, the thing is, you, it's, it's one thing to make steel and, uh, you know, maybe locomotives and all these things. But you know, it, it's imperative to actually create thought leaders, young thought leaders in India, people who will think differently, think new. Now, because we're talking about new nationalism, what it should be, primarily it should be about thinking differently. That's why I'm saying this, OK? So he said, you should create new thought leaders in India. Then he went on. You know, Jamshedji Tata got off in Europe, but he went on to the US, and he came back. Many months later, I don't remember, eight or nine months later only he returned. Then, you know, Jamshedji Tata actually wrote to him, wrote to him and said, you know, Swamiji, we had these conversations and you told me this and I'm now interested, I'm convinced that it's the right thing to do, but where should I do it? He said, you know, the, in this British ruled India, it's, I can't clearly say where you can do it. What I suggest to you is that you go to, you go to Mysore, there is a very wise king in Mysore, Nalvadi Krishna Raju Vadeer. You talk to him, he may take some interest. And you know, over through some protracted process, in those days, the Maharaja of Mysore gave 367 acres and 50 lakh rupees to start the Indian Institute of Science. It was called the Tata Institute of Science. So this is old nationalism. This is not new nationalism. Maybe that's a model of nationalism that we should look at. So I'll begin with that. There are many contesting ideas of nationalism now. The West is very ups upset with us because, you know, the West is saying that we are doing a West and, of course, Indian intellectuals. Who can forget them, OK? They are very upset that, you know, India is doing a, becoming a Hindu majoritarian nationalist, you know, uh, country. But uh, there, is, there is another view that of interpre interpreting Hindu as a cultural idea or a religious idea. So there are some people are saying that the new nationalism is religious nationalism. But I will tell you this. The new nationalism has to be about new thinking. I was actually quite struck, although I caught the last leg of it, you know, by, you know, Vinayak Bhatji's, uh, you know, address. It is true, there is, a, there, is, there, is, there is a way to connect to the world system. But the way to connect to the world system, I just told him when I met outside also, is not to say whether we should give patents to people, competing patents we should give to people. Is the patent system valid ethically, I'm asking? When you invent something, what, you found everything in it? So many people had found so many things, and you found one last link. It's like somebody has done the jigsaw puzzle of an elephant, and two or three pieces are left. You know, they've gone to wash their face or attend to a phone call, and you finish the last three pieces. You can say. That's what the patent system is. It's, it's a little bit ridiculous. And it's not in Indian way at all. Somebody asked the question about, you know, Vedas being Apaurishaya and, you know, who is the author? Actually, a wise Indian would feel ridiculous to claim authorship. Forget <laughs> copyright. Why would you do that, okay? What is intellectual property? You are an intellectual property already. If you're born to parents who gave you education, you're their intellectual property. And they owe it to their parents, and they to their parents, and to the society that created them. What is your personal intellectual property? It is ridiculous, right? I say this because, let's go back to that story of Jamshedji Tata, who can make a lot of money 
making steel and locomotives and soap and so on. What is his return on investment to start a high academic, high quality academic institution in Mysore? Even the name Tata was stolen by his so previous regimes. The Tata Institute, it used to be called, it was made Indian Institute of Science. Why would he do that? This is not a new way of thinking. This is the Bharatiya way of thinking. You know, you, know, you saw, you know, you know the author, uh, Nina Rai, in, in, in her talk, she said that, you know, who planted that tree, do you know? My father told me once, uh, somebody made a short film of a person. There is a, you know, in, um, we used to call it Hore Gallu. That means like, you know, when you have carrying heavy weight on your head, you want to rest. If, the, if you can't keep it on the ground and then lift it again. So they actually, you, keep, you, cre you create like a bench, but it's a tall one, not to sit on, but actually just to displace the load. So you bend and you can take it on your head again. Okay. When we were kids around Bangalore city, when we went to the outskirts, there would be lots of these scattered across. Who did that? Siga bus stand Okay, I'll say it in English. You know, when in the from the MP lad funds, you know our ministers and um, um, you know our sansads, they actually put a shelter for a bus stand. Okay, just a shelter. It's like four four pillars and some you know some tin roof or something they'll put. Okay. Almost as big as the bus stand, they'll put a board saying, you know, this has been given by this person through from MP lad funds. It's not their funds also, it's our funds. <laughs> they'll put that board. Who did that? This thing of owning what you've done is very wrong. That is why you must say namama, namama, you should say. It's a it's a very important idea, you know. Not it's not yours. You're an instrument only of that. If you've been given education, you're very lucky. If you're speaking English in India, if you can read and speak in English, you're maybe four or five, six percent of the population, that's it. You live in a false world of, you know, where all kinds of important people are there. They don't count. If they walk in the street, nobody will disturb them. They should understand this. They count on Twitter and so on. You know, they don't count. So my first, as a bit of, I won't even call it advice, okay? Look, take it, take it as this. My first idea of it is that we must imagine a new way of self-worth. You must imagine that you, when you say, who are you, you answer as who you are now, from where you came, where you intend to be, what you are studying, all that makes your identity. Your identity is really very nominally and quite helplessly of caste and religion and language and so on. Really, it's complete accident it is. If you do a story of a person born in the next bed, mistaken identity, you'll immediately understand how silly this is, correct? Your identity should be, who you are should be, what you do. Think about this, whenever you go somewhere and somebody asks, who are you? You do not give the answer according to your identity. You give the answer according to the person asking the question. See, if you go to, let us say you have a degree in, uh, you know, in international relations, in say from Harvard University, but you go to a village school and somebody asks the question, what is the name of the tree? If you ask anybody what is the name of a tree, the highest educated person is the least likely to know what tree it is, right? I mean, you, you have to be an uneducated villager to know what tree it is or plant it is. I took my daughters once because I was doing a film on documentary on maths, how to teach maths in school. So I went to a village close to Bangalore city, about 40, 50 kilometers. And I took my daughters who were in uh, eighth standard and sixth standard or something that time. And I took them 
And these children, because we spent a whole day shooting there, these school village school kids also were talking. They could, of course, talk only in Kannada. And I did this exercise. I said, let's go for a walk around the village. And all the children, can you imagine one class of 40, 50 yeah, little boys and girls with me and my daughters? And I'll say, what plant is this? What weed is this? What is the name of that little lake there? Who is, the, who is the MLA of your place? Who is the Gram Panchayat president? Who is the MP of your place? Every question those kids, you know, in like a chorus they will answer. Okay. My daughters were there. And as, as I drove back home, I was driving into our lane. As I was coming in Jainagar, Bangalore, I said, what is the name of this tree? What is the name of the plant? <laughs> My kids knew nothing. Very 90% above scoring kids. They knew not one thing there. For you to be yourself, for you, for you to know yourself, you should know where you come from. That is your true identity. You can't control your genetic material, OK? It's already happened to you. You should abandon the old ideas of race, caste, and such. I think you should remember it for the evil that it has done in the past. But you should not use that as a virtue signal for yourself. This whole thing of identity making is false. If it is into the future, who you want to be. The second thing I will say is, when you go, when you go to career counseling, you'll see, you know, the question is asked, yen scope then and ge e field ali? You'll ask. What is the scope this field offers to you? is what you are, you say. I'm saying, what is the scope you have for that field? See, this is the reversing the imagination, you know? What will the universe give me? You universe has given you already here. You're here because of that. What will you give back? You are what you do. Everything else is really not true. You are what you do. Now look at, I'll f quickly finish this because, you know, I want, I want to see if there'll be time for questions. So I'll quickly finish this now, five minutes. Now think about some things. What are the great problems facing India? I come from Bangalore. I'll say traffic is our biggest problem. How do you solve the traffic problem? Lots of answers are given. Don't be the traffic. Just stop being, stop contributing. Look at every idea of the West. Colonialism, evil. I'm speaking in English. We are, I'm wearing these clothes that make me look a little bit ridiculous. Think about it. OK? I'm, it is colonialism has given this, this language. I'm ashamed to speak in my language. You can make big, big quarrels, identity politics, you can say and say, don't learn Sanskrit. The West will never say, don't learn Asian Greek, it is pagan. They'll never say. They'll not say, don't learn Latin because Julius Caesar was a dictator. No, they won't say that. But in India, you will say, don't learn Sanskrit because it's a dead language. That's what they'll tell you, correct? This is the received wisdom we have. You think about what is good for our society. Don't use cars. That, you know, there, are, there is a problem of what to do with cows. There is. You put them to work. Clean energy. Now, that's a very bad idea, is it? Why is it a bad idea? By what, by what yardsticks of return on you invest into something, you make technology, and you get something out of it. By what yardstick is it bad? In IIM, there was a very found, foundational thinker, Professor, you know, uh, uh, Ramaswamy, N.S. Ramaswamy. We used to call him Bullock, Bullock Cart Ramaswamy. You should return to that. Are cities great ideas? Think about cities. See, I'll tell you something alarming. Bangalore has got at least five times more population than it can handle. Bangalore city has got roads that are only one-twelfth of the capacity required to have so many vehicles. 
Are growing cities great ideas? I told one of your colleagues, you know, who brought me, picked me up at the airport, see, I'll tell you, Belgium in the next 10 years will have a population of three to four million people. You think somebody will come and do development for you? Think about it. You will suffer this. When you're my age, if you don't watch out, you'll be crippled with disease. See, if you people have dogs, you know that dogs are getting these, you know, sudden ulcers, their kidneys swell or their liver swells. It is because particulate 2.5, less than 2.5 particulate matter, it actually can go through interstitial tissue. That means it can, there is tissue between organs. It can penetrate it. That is the problem. They're so delicate, dogs. What about humans? You're not delicate. I'm sure dogs came before us. They've survived longer than us. Sea green turtles, this is my favorite story. You know, the Interplanetary Panel for Climate Change, they put out this thing saying, example saying, sea green turtles come to the shore, to come to the beach and lay eggs there. Now the thing is, if this average temperature of the sea goes beyond 31 degrees, okay, then the male becomes sterile. That be, that become that means the species will become extinct. Turtles, perhaps from Jurassic age, they are there. They live for 400 years. If it can happen to such a sturdy species, what about us? Look at our vanity and our stupidity. Think for yourself. Think of a future where you will live, and your children will live. And for that, it means you have to think differently. Cars are very bad. They're going to be phased out in the world. Remember this. Fossil fuel burning is very bad. You shouldn't do it. You should not build homes with compound walls. How high will you make the wall? Gated communities are prisons. They're not privileged play spaces. You should, you should not. Will you go to jungle and have a clean the jungle program? There's no dirt in the jungle. There's no waste. There's no pollution in jungle. Nature manages. Where you go, there is dirt. Don't pollute. Don't clean up pollution. Don't pollute. All these are old ideas. They're not new ideas. Poverty is not the problem. Remember this. We cannot all be rich and consume so much. The planet will finish in about five, six years if all of us consume like that. Poverty is not the problem. Deprivation is the problem. Think about it. It's deprivation that is the problem. If everything is provided, poverty is not a problem. Maybe poverty is a blessing for this country. You don't have to agree with me. I'm just saying, provoking you to think. Caste is not the problem. If, I, if, if creatures can have diversity, biodiversity, their caste is not a problem. It's discrimination that is the problem. You work at removing discrimination. Make caste irrelevant or make it beautiful. You're the one on Paddati, you're the one on the culture, it's beautiful it is. We can celebrate diversity. The problem is discrimination. I'm saying think, you have, you have to think differently if you want to solve problems. If you want to imitate the West, you're writing your own death sentence. Actually, I'll stop with that, thank you. Thank you, sir. May I now request Sri Pashwanji to kindly address the gathering. Most respected Sri Prakash Bilwadi ji, Vaibhav ji, dignitaries of the dais, friends, I came from Bihar yesterday. And after very patiently listening to Belwadi ji, and obviously with whom I share a part of my name, Prakash. So already with so much Prakash on the stage, do we need Prakash from the off stage? That's a question. The topic which has been given to me, new age politics, patriotism, and inclusion. Friends, before I start, I want to pay my respects and salutations to this land. 
इस भूमि को मैं नमन करना चाहता हूँ बिकॉज वेन यू डू अ डीपर एनालिसिस वेन यू हिस्टोरिकली लुक एट सम ऑफ द इंस्परेशनल फिगर्स इंटीग्रेशन और इंक्लूजन माइट हैव बिकम एन अकेडमिक टर्म टूडे बट इट हैज बीन पार्ट ऑफ आर एंड अ वेरी फंडामेंटल पार्ट ऑफ आर थिंकिंग एंड आवर डी एन ए नाउ वाई दिस लैंड वाइल कमिंग आई नोटिस्ड अ प्लेस संत कनक दास चौराहा आई हेड अबाउट द फर्स्ट एवर वुमेन पोइटिस हु रिवोल्टेड अगेंस्ट द कास्ट हेजुमिनी पुण्य स्त्री कल्लावी सो एज कल्चर एज सिविलाइजेशन आई थिंक वी आर इंडेटेड टू दिस लैंड दैट हैज प्रोड्यूस सच टॉलवर्ड्स बैक देन एंड स्पेशली संत कनक दास एंड वाई इज ई मोर रेलिवेंट टूडे especially with reference to inclusion if you see he has written a beautiful prose where he has said that how ragi that we use which is commonly used here rarely used in the north is one of the marginalized crop not the mainstream crop and this is precisely the idea of inclusion when on the initiative and insistence of our honorable prime minister the entire world is celebrating international year of millets this is the true recognition which we must understand and appreciate friends this year is very crucial it's very significant 2023 as mentioned by previous speakers as well we are leading the g20 initiative we are also the chair of shanghai cooperation organization and also 2023 is the international year of millets 2018 was the national year of millets but 2023 is the international year of millets and we must understand that this has come after some real hard work dedication the last 8 9 years have been very fundamental how the entire vocabulary of politics has undergone a very unprecedented transformation and when we speak of inclusion and i am really grateful to the organizers that we are speaking of inclusion because till now in the history of independent india the people who were talking of inclusion the people who were talking of social justice they were not ready to venture beyond their families if that was not the case for the first time in the history of our india for the first time in the history of our politics we have a woman from adivasi community as the head of our constitution this is real inclusion and we must also remember history will remember those who opposed her for the first time we have one of the most powerful prime minister in the history of our country from one of the backward communities this is true inclusion friends i have come from bihar always you see there are attacks on the basis of our fault lines now when i speak of fault lines it can be of any nature in the name of language in the name of caste in the name of religion in the name of region and so on and so forth so when we are taking a global leadership position and we mean it today in this hall none of us are wearing masks and what is the reason behind that because historically all of us have received the two doses of covid vaccine thanks to the vision and the leadership we have to understand that earlier also you look at the polio vaccination you look at the hepatitis vaccination it took us decades but when it came to covid vaccine 
वी एंश्योर्ड कि सिर्फ भारत ही नहीं विश्व के 50 देशों में भारत का वैक्सीन जाए द पॉइंट विच आई एम ट्राइंग टू इंडिकेट इज दैट वी आर इन अ पोजिशन ऑफ सेटिंग ग्लोबल स्टैंडर्ड्स रिसेंटली इन द मंथ ऑफ जनवरी there was a conference organized which was called the voice of the global south the global south in the sense any country in the southern hemisphere india was leading that we saw how new age politics is about not taking sides but to not negotiate or compromise with our interest as well we successfully evacuated more than 20000 indian students from such an emergency situation when the war is happening between russia and ukraine we did not take any sides i categorically remember one of the speeches made by the honorable foreign minister when he was the in the united nations general assembly the jamaican jamaican foreign minister came to him and said that i have covid vaccine in my heart that came from india that is the true power of india that is the true potential of india on five counts i think we can see how the entire narrative landscape of politics has changed what used to be given pre 2010 pre 2009 ki desh mein to aise hi hota hai and how it has changed fundamentally when you look at security number 1 desh ki suraksha samman swabhiman se kisi prakar ka koi samjhauta nahi hua hai we still remember how in 2008 the then prime minister said the single largest threat to internal security in india is maoist violence If you look at the data now, the left-wing extremism-affected districts are less than 25 now. Apart from Jammu and Kashmir, not a single terror incident happened across India. Today, we have the competence, capability, and the confidence that if need be, जरूरत पड़ी तो सीमा के इस पार नहीं सीमा के उस पार भी हम जाने को इतना आत्मविश्वास रखते हैं. so we have to understand this was not the mindset before it has undergone a fundamental transformation with respect to security number 2 economics how financially we have seen things change only in the matter of years i was looking at a very interesting data since 1947 the amount of fdi that has come to india is about 950 billion dollars out of those 950 billion dollars 500 odd billion dollars have come in the matter of last 7 8 years we have to understand how this concept of financial untouchability there used to be a prime minister who said ki delhi se 1 rupaye chalta hai to gaon mein 15 paisa pahunchta hai now we have seen after the opening of jandhan accounts and how technology has played a very transformative role friends with more than 45 crore jandhan accounts delhi se 1 rupaye chalta hai to gaon mein bhi 1 rupaye hi pahunchta hai anywhere in the country bihar odisha west bengal anywhere you see that leakage has stopped no prime minister had the audacity to speak about toilets from the ramparts of red fort लाल किले के प्राचीर से वी हैड अ लीडर हू स्पोक अबाउट इट एंड एंश्योर्ड दैट द टॉयलेट कवरेज दैट वॉज ओनली थर्टी फाइव परसेंट बिफोर टू थाउजेंड एंड फोर्टीन हैज नाउ रीच नाइनटी एट नाइनटी नाइन परसेंट इन एरियाज एंड लुक एट द इकोनॉमिक फ्रूट दैट हैज कम आउट ऑफ इट सो वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड अप्रिशिएट दर इज अ फंडामेंटल नेरेटिव शिफ्ट दैट इज ग्रेजुअली हैपनिंग इन आवर जेनरेशन what respected nand kumar ji also said that how the demographic change is going to benefit from it 
from the years and decades of struggle from 2022 to 2047 what we are calling is an amrit kal economically in terms of autonomy in terms of global leadership we are at a very decisive role friends we have to be fortunate enough and grateful enough for our previous generation aaj hame aabhar prakat karne ka mauka hai जो त्याग तपस्या बलिदान हमारी पुरानी पीढ़ियों ने किया है आज उसका फल हमको मिल रहा है यूजुअली यू सी एंड स्पेशली विद रेफरेंस टू इंक्लूजन वी मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड फ्रेंड्स दैट नॉट ओनली एट द लीडरशिप पोजिशन वी हैव सीन हाउ फंडामेंटली टॉक ऑफ टेक द केस ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश यूजुअली the people who are against us they say oh it's a regime of uh, exclusivist supremacist and i'm sure some of you would be aware that in the so called supremacist exclusivist regime for the first time in the history of our country we have three women from dalit community as ministers in that supremacist and exclusivist government has it happened before people have done politics in the name of social justice people have done politics in the name of inclusion but they have not included anyone apart from their family members start from kashmir to kanyakumari from kashmir you see pdp national conference again a dynastical political organization you come to punjab there are badals you come to rajasthan there are pilots you come to uttar pradesh there are yadavs you go to bihar there are yadavs not a single state in india is bereft of such family based political enterprises they usually take this narrative and i have no fear in admitting that as india is taking a global leadership position there is a huge cabal of breaking india forces both within the country and outside the country do you think it's all strategic it is all a matter of coincidence that as we are getting the presidency of g20 there are reports from bbc there is some mr george soros who is speaking in defense of democracy now this is also a, another laughable example i like you you win election democracy is good i don't like you you win election there is an elected autocracy Now, this is clearly beyond our comprehension so 1.4 billion people of india are giving their certificate does not matter anymore any think tank or any research organization in the west will decide the health of indian democracy we have to understand and those who are lecturing us in their history of more than 200 years of democracy they haven't elected a single woman head of state that is a million dollar question when we have a woman from adivasi community as a head of our constitution so we have to do some serious introspection friends no need to be defensive the sort of integrity and inclusion that has been there in our civilizational continuity it is in our dna a lot of conversation about ram charitmanas we also heard madam speaking about it and i'm very thankful to her that she mentioned about marshi valmiki as well ram temple which is being constructed in ayodhya in that same premises we are having a temple of marshi valmiki as well can you imagine a ram temple can you imagine the ram charit manas without marshi valmiki can you imagine ram charit manas without mata shabri without kevat nishad raj but the same political forces same breaking india forces who are against our culture civilization and country are making this point which we have to understand people have realized this we are not going to buckle down time and again you see there is an argument about caste census again the same people are making that argument if you do a caste census within their political organization they haven't gone beyond their families let's take an example of rashtriya janata dal a ruling dispensation in my state bihar one son is deputy chief minister another son is health minister another daughter is member of rajya sabha the mother is member of legislative council and the president the father is the super president 
Have they done justice and inclusion within their own organization, we must ask. So the new age inclusion, we cannot imagine politics without inclusion because inclusion is part of our behavior, is a part of our culture. Everywhere you see, the bhakti saints, the bhakti movement that came, if you do a social configuration of them as well, you'll realize they came from different origins. Kabir for that matter, who is revered by so many of us, there is no conversation about his social origin. You must understand, friends. We must equip ourselves with the data. There is a fundamental transition and transformation which is happening. And not only in India, but at a global scale as well. We are setting the contours of conversation. Our election commission is also the official agency for conducting elections for the United Nations. There is any disturbed area in any country, our election commission of India goes and conducts elections. That is one of our biggest source of soft powers. So the idea is to take everyone along regardless of his caste, gender, religion, region, language he or she speaks. This is true inclusion, which we have missed entirely or deliberately. There were sections who misled us. So, young friends, it's very critical for us to develop this understanding. We are really fortunate to be a witness, to be a generation that is going to witness the transformation. Friends, apart from security, economics, another very important area where we see this transformation is the idea of unsung heroes. You see, apart from G20, we have Azadi Kamrit Mohsav as well. There was absolutely no conversation about them. The post-independence intellectuals, they had only one agenda, only to portray the contribution of one single family, one single political organization. But the idea is to acknowledge each and every one who would have known about the contributions of Sant Kanak Das. Do they not need to be remembered? Books must be written on his contributions. Today, thankfully, National Book Trust is coming out with good books. And I strongly advise all of you to read about Kanak Das, to read about Kallavi. These are our true icons who will give us power, who will give us the sense of articulation that inclusion is part of our behavior, inclusion is part of our DNA. Absolutely nothing was done. Entire credit of freedom movement, freedom struggle was given to one individual, one family. Is it not the right time to ask the questions? These are some hard, difficult questions, friends. But when it comes to patriotism, when it comes to inclusion, we have to understand. We don't have to be on the back foot. Because the narrative builders, the discourse makers, they will try to push us away. It has been their arena, but not any longer now. In the last eight, nine years, we have seen a huge scholarship that has developed. So you must understand this. Every sense, political, economic, financial, social, who would have thought? Earlier, they used to happen. We will make the announcement, but that project will not get realized. But now it is happening. The entire vocabulary of politics is changing, friends. And our single largest USP is that of inclusion. So I'm really thankful and grateful to the organizers. Because it's very important that we start having some difficult conversation with respect to this. It might not sound palatable to a lot of us. But that is the need of the hour. That is the requirement. Abhi avashakta is to vishay baat karne ki. Time and again, the political discourse is stooping so low. But we need some constructive, positive, and solution-oriented discourse. I was really happy to see the introduction of Prabhu Bharat when it mentioned that we are going to speak about Bharat ki bhavveta. A Bharat ki bhavveta kya? Bharat is bhav for bhav. 
र फोर राग एंड तो फोर ताल इस भाव राग और ताल को जो समझ गया वो भारत की भव्यता को समझ जाएगा सो दैट्स वेरी क्रुशियल फ्रेंड टूडे एटमोस्फेयर इज सच फ्री थिंकर्स इंडिविजुअल्स वी कैन एक्सप्रेस आर आइडियाज वी कैन आर्टिकुलेट आर सेल्फ वी आर फ्री और शॉर्ट ऑफ इन द जर्नी टू गेटिंग फ्री फ्रॉम द कलेज क्लचेस ऑफ दोज नैरेटिव मेकर्स but we must be beware of the forces both inside the country and outside the country who claim to be the custodians of social justice who claim to be the custodian of inclusion and you look at their feudal mindset they are not able to digest that if there is a president every second third day they are using some abusive language about her every second third day they are stooping to a new low with respect to our prime minister as well this shows their sense of entitlement and sense of arrogance as well but the new age politics cannot be looked at as a matter of isolation <laughs> patriotism and inclusion is at the core of it and we must not only understand about it but also articulate without any fear or any threat because people have started it for the first time we are looking at conversations about reforms in the judiciary as well which is a den of dynasty but the conversation has started more representation more inclusion more social diversity is the need of the our friends and the time is right the time is appropriate there cannot be a better time than this it's always better to have diverse perspective because someone he or she is coming with a set of lived experiences when the honorable president spoke about the prisoners the under trials in the indian prison, prisons we saw there is a provision for this in the new budget for under trial prisoners so that's very important that someone with lived experiences coming and speaking their minds as young friends i expect that will definitely make our minds on understanding this fundamental transformation that has happened in the last 8 9 years also make efforts to identify those unsung heroes and can we think of making some project making some papers on that it is our fundamental duty to make the next generation aware of the contributions of kanak das and mata kallave otherwise they'll be forgotten kisi aur ke zimme ye kaam chhodna this is not justified friends everywhere every space institutions now and that institutions play a very significant role they are getting more diverse they are getting more representative and inclusive and thanks to the changes that has happened in the last 8 9 years we have started having this conversation as well because people who have spoken on inclusion they have spoken on their own terms and conditions and they have not done any there there is no positive outcome at all i recently came across one of the nightmarish massacre that has happened in the sundarbans of west bengal morej jhopi morej jhopi is an island in sundarbans in 1979 it's been more than 40 years thousands of people men women children they were brutally killed in a state sponsored violence by the left wing government there and absolutely no amount of literature on that now they will be the same people who will be coming at universities and academic spaces and lecturing us on inclusion in the entire history of cpi ml i have done my research for the first time they have a member from dalit community as a in their polit bureau now these are the people talking about inclusion these are the people talking about gender justice now this is clearly beyond my comprehension the time is appropriate friends people have made up their mind people are speaking through ballots <coughs> but as scholars as young intellectuals this is also our fundamental responsibility to do our bit to start our own scholarship and have a perspective which is not exclusive but inclusive and remember we don't need to put an extra little effort on that as 
our culture, as part of this civilizational continuity, it has it inside us. It's very crucial. I hope that my journey of more than 1,500 kilometers from Bihar, I sort of make an impact on igniting this thought or implanting this thought in your mind that how crucial, how remarkable is this point on diversity, inclusion, and representation, and how it has changed the entire landscape in the last eight, nine years. Thank you so much, friends. Swanji, uh, just to conclude uh, what sir has said, uh, Dr. Ambedkar was once asked in the constitution, when he presented the constitution uh, in the parliament, he was asked, uh, what's your opinion on the constitution? Is it a good constitution or is it a bad constitution? So this is what uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar replied. He said, however bad a constitution might be, it is sure to turn out good if people who are called to work on it happen to be a good lot. However good a constitution might be, it is sure to turn out bad if people who are called to work on it happen to be a bad lot. So with this, I open the session for the question answer session. And I had a question for Prakash sir. Uh, when you talk about igniting young minds, uh, we have a lot of factions in the society who ignite the young minds and we face it personally. Uh, there is a faction to which you two belong that is the actors. Uh, from there we see that uh, actors tend to influence the young generations a lot. But when it comes to nationalism, they have selectively avoided it. And, I, and I'm not complaining about it. But what is your views on that? I wanted to know. See, the author Nassim Taleb uh, it once tweeted that, you know, people don't go and ask, journalists don't go and ask, you know, um, doctors or engineers or, uh, you know, what, what do you think of this on any issue, river water dispute, on any issue, they don't go and ask all these random people. They'll ask actors. Now, actors, like, if you're given a script, maybe you can tell something well. Otherwise, what will, what will actors know? Usually those of us who are going to acting are those who have failed in everything else and we go there, okay? So, uh, so he, said, he said, don't actually go to actors and find out any opinion because they're trained to look intelligent. It's not the same thing as they can give you intelligent answers. Maybe all actors are not so bad, but I think most actors are fairly useless. So you should not be influenced by them. <laughs> so. I find it I find it funny that you are thinking and applauding about this. But I'll see, see, I, see. I want to tell you this thing. See, actors are valued because you know our faces are seen. You no, know, and uh, many actors when they are recognized, they feel they're rewarded. Basically, they're recognized because they are, you can see them before. That's all the recognition is. They're not recognizing anything else. I feel okay, but. See, I will tell you the idea of competition is very misunderstood. That's a new way of thinking idea. I'll tell you why, sir. See, spardha, spardhatmak, you should be. That's what we will always you know, say, positive value. It's a positive value when you have to think but. See, in a competition, if you beat somebody in a competition, in some achievement, in sports, or in studies, or in, uh, in, in any of the measurable things you beat somebody, that is the reward, okay? But to say, I have greater market share than anybody else, contradicts the idea of inclusion. If somebody has 90% of the market share, what kind of justice is that? Somebody said that 92% of bank loans are taken only by about seven to seven and a half percent of industries in India. See, that kind of winning, is not correct. Sparda should be about being better than somebody else. Sparda is not about somehow managing rewards better than others, you know. That is the thing, the, the, the spirit of inclusion means if I, if I have to be good, everybody has to be good. If I get a bigger salary than my friend, I should think about how my friend also should get a bigger salary. That's how I mean, you know. Actors are okay, but 
is indian cinema great cinema see this is how you should look at you know now somebody is a billionaire but is his city good see basically if you are a billionaire and around you is a slum then you know that's a very western imported imagination the idea of inclusion is that everyone around me should be well so i can take a walk you know in my neighborhood that's how you should feel Uh, good afternoon sir myself tejas my question is for prakash sir and first of all sir like you said that your topic igniting young minds you have surely done that i feel and uh, when it comes to young people it has a spillover effect and when we go back to our friends in society of our city uh, we'll surely talk about this issue so coming to the question is sir that uh, you are a very socially rooted person and uh, say from your college days or 20 years ago or today what changes do you feel uh, in that are happening in youth maybe good or bad uh, that you think you have noticed and you can uh, share insights about you know i i i, I will also request dr paswan to respond to this because you know in bihar there has been a narrative of how great changes happened and all that you know and i think it should be interrogated so i will answer your question though first see we wanted flyovers in bangalore city when they first built flyovers we thought wow the city is getting flyovers now we have traffic jams and our flyovers actually take traffic jam from one side to put it on the other side that's what the flyover is doing what i'm saying is you look at the western construct all their paradigms i'm i'm very struck that you know fukuyama you know has now said that his idea of history is dead is kind of very arrogant it was that statement history is dead some people have not begun with history what is he saying we used to say but now we realize the west realizes that the story is not yet done it is now to begin that story is what we realize i think now this idea of retiring fossil fuels you know of having you know a community centric imagination flyovers are being abandoned you know in in developed countries now we are talking see when you took the covid vaccine for instance see the imagination shift earlier somebody privileged could access the vaccine poor communities could not get vaccines their children would get polio and they would you know all these problems used to be there today you take the vaccine not just to protect yourself today you want everybody to ta take the vaccine so that you can be free that's why you can remove your mask it's a different way of thinking you understand you've realized that when everybody is safe only then you are safe when it's good for everybody only then it is good for you it is taking some time you know you, you one of your heroes bill gates is speculating whether to put a dust wrap around the earth to us prevent you know uh, climb you know heating of the earth very ridiculous you know like <laughs> <laughs> like it's like so superman you know first one like he goes changes the direction of the earth spin it is ridiculous this arrogance has to die and it is dying the thing is it is not getting reported as quickly as it should but great changes are happening and i'll tell you the next 20 years will be the dismantling of the past 40 or 50 years and you should participate in the dismantling in a creative way so that you can get a better world for yourselves stop him you know wearing torn jeans is fashionable because we have become idiots that's why you know otherwise why is it fashionable your common sense should have told you you should not do that our mind should not become like torn jeans you should not say i don't know <laughs> that's not a virtue you know that is the change that's a big change in summary no i think uh, prakash ji is right and when we see the west also has in a sense realized that they no longer have that space on the table that they used to have we must realize that the global power axis that used to lie and about you mentioned fukuyama as well that used to lie in that region of us and europe that global power axis has shifted to asia now especially the indian ocean countries you see the faster growing economies are here the demographic dividend is here democracy is here all the market the demand is here so they have sort of now adjusted to this newer realities 
that the conversations for the future is going to happen in this region only. You cannot have any global conversation ignoring India, China, Taiwan, when it comes to semiconductors, the Asian Tigers, Singapore, Australia. And similarly, we are seeing such multilateral initiatives as well. You see the I2U2, you see the Quad as well, India, Japan, Australia, and the US. So the focus is now going to be here. And like our civilizational thinking, when we speak of Sarve Bhavantu Sukhena, it in itself is inclusive. We're speaking of survey. Sab sukhi rahe, sab nirogi rahe. Kuch sukhi rahe, kuch nirogi rahe. This is not our civilizational outlook. This is not our civilizational perspective. That's very crucial, friends. Pranams to everyone. My question is to Prakash, sir. Sir, uh, you just uh, ended up your speech with the last thing that uh, we need to have an individual identity than the, what we came from or those things. The very idea about the individual identity by Swami Vivekananda was that Advaita Vedanta, where he said that very individual is a God himself. The fire lies within himself and all. But uh, how do this youth take it forward? Is India uh, less spiritual or too much religious to be spiritual? Thank you. See, I'm not a religious person and, you know, everybody's freedom to be religious. I don't mind that. But, you know, I'm opposed to the idea of asmita as the West means it. You know, the idea is that, I you know, I will, my progress or who I am is, a, is an illusion. Actually, in Indian thinking, asmita is avidya. What I meant by saying, if you go and ask somebody, somebody asks you who you are, you have to answer the question according to the person asking it means. If you go to the, you can say, I am, you know, I am a, I am from Bangalore, I am a Kannadiga, okay? But when you go to the border of India, you will say I am an Indian. Because the person asking the question for him, it's not relevant, you know, that you are from Belgaum or from Belagavi, if you wish, you know? What I am saying is this entire claim of individual is avidya. You are only how you are defined where you are, as you are recognized. That's what you are. And your recognition is not something you can shake away. Don't take it well or don't take it not so well. My, see, you know, you know, what is that? Randy Post said you know, in his lecture, Justice Thomas Sowell also quoted it. Everybody is dealt a hand. When you're playing cards, you get a hand. You either throw it, take your life, finish or you play it as well as you can this is a situation for everybody but this is not the same thing as saying you know either our karma that's not what we are saying you actually the collective is the one that creates opportunities for everyone a billionaire makes more billion that's all he's not going to create opportunities for everyone but a democracy needs to create opportunity for everyone that's the power of your vote your vote is one among many. The billionaire's vote and your vote have the same value. This is decency. This is what I'm saying. See, you must be one among many. That is decent. This idea of that I'm a separate individual means you stay in a prison. Don't use anything the collective has created. You take your one billion, sit in your room and don't come outside, we'll have to say. I just have one question for Aswanji. Uh, does the new age politics define less of top bureaucratic approach and more of local autonomy? Certainly, and uh, Prime Minister is constantly talking about the idea of cooperative federalism, that how states can play a more important role and how from the top-down approach, the bottom-up approach is what we need. And in this direction only, we have seen uh, the very successful aspirational district program. Now, that aspirational district program has now transformed into aspirational blocks program, that how can we make our blocks more self-sufficient? Now, when we speak of the transformation in the vocabulary of politics, what we used to see was appeasement or tushti karan. Now, what we are seeing is saturation or tripti karan. That how can we have 100% uh, 
toilet, 100% water availability, 100% houses, 100% of uh, health insurance. So that is something which is very important. And good that you raise this question that aspirational blocks, aspirational district, now everything is not and cannot be decided from Delhi itself. Now what are the concerns, what are the aspirations of the people of Belgaum? What are the concerns and aspirations of people of Kolhapur? That has to be decided there. So this has started and from dismantling of the old, uh, the institutions of old India like Planning Commission which used to dictate terms from Delhi with Delhi as the epicenter where the centrifugal force is dominating. Now this has changed and obviously in the coming times we'll see more and more decentralization programs like the aspiration block programs and that change from Tushti Karan to Tripti Karan, the idea that we can also have saturation, 100% of everything, that has now becoming a reality. Uh, thank you, sir. Dhanyavad ji. Is antar drishti vichar manthan pe, mein prabut bharat ki or se kritadnya hoon. श्रोते जन यह मेरी भूल थी कि श्री गुरु प्रकाश पासवान जी को डॉक्टरेट पदवी रांची यूनिवर्सिटी से प्रदान हुई है अतः मैं आप सभी की क्षमा प्रार्थी हूँ मैं श्री वैभव जी को अनुरोध करती हूँ कि वे दोनों अतिथि जनों को स्मृति चिन्ह दे और सम्मानित करें धन्यवाद यह दूसरा चरण यहाँ पे समाप्त होता है मैं सभी श्रोतेजन को यह सूचित करना चाहती हूँ कि वे अभी भोजन का आस्वादन करें और ठीक दो बज के मिनट को यहाँ इकट्ठा हो जाए धन्यवाद